I have read more than 10 books on website design. And here are some of the top 10 key takeaways that you should know about as a beginner. When I say websites, one of the most frequently thought questions is what to do about the coding. And if you're like me, who's never enjoyed coding, then I have a great news for you. There is this awesome internationally acclaimed tool called Framer, where you can create stunning looking websites with all kinds of scroll effects, animations, and make your websites responsive all without writing a single line of code. If you are a professional and you have your designs, your prototype ready on Figma, you can import all of your work to Framer and bring your website to life instantly. And if you are a beginner, you can get started and have fun with hundreds of their free templates. If you have used Figma before, then learning Framer will be just a matter of few minutes for you because the interface is so similar. But if you're a beginner, you don't have to worry. It will take a couple of days for you to get the hang of it. But whenever you have a question in mind, you can look through all of their free tutorials on YouTube. And that will help you to create your professional looking website independently. You can try all of these features, have fun with their tools, all that I mentioned to you without spending any money. Now that I've told you about a no code design tool, let's talk about what actually goes in our website. And this is also very important. Whether you're a professional or a beginner, there are a couple of thumb rules you need to keep in mind to make your website look clean and professional. So what are they? Let's begin with the first one. Even if you are moderately comfortable in English, you will still be able to read the words I show you on screen. How awesome is that? Isn't it fascinating the way our brain works? This is because we scan through information and yet we are able to make sense out of it. So we need to remember this rule when you're designing a website. We want to break down our text into smaller paragraphs, into smaller segments, which makes our information more scan friendly. You will notice that all successful brands use this rule. For example, when you check out the Apple website, it's only when you click on the product, you will get to read more about it. When your information is systematically broken down, your website will be easier to scan through which will enhance the experience of the person who's visiting it. So it is important for us also as designers to break down our information into smaller segments. In other words, we need to design a blueprint of what goes on the home page, on the second page, on the third page. And this way, our web design is a lot more systematic. When somebody is visiting your website for the first time, they obviously don't know the blueprint of the web page. And we want to make their experience as comfortable as possible. And the easiest way to do that is to either add a toolbar at the top or a scroll bar on the right side. This way, your visitor has an idea of where exactly are they on the web page. And it helps them to not feel lost or frustrated. Next rule to remember is when somebody is visiting your website, they shouldn't feel that they're going back in time. It is very important to stay updated with the latest trends. To enhance the visual experience of your website, fancy scrolling effects and animations are our best friends. It is the easiest way to make your website look modern. You don't have to worry about the technicality of these features if you're using something like Framer because you can make use of all of these tools hassle-free. Talking about the font styles, of course, it's your website and you can do whatever you want and you can have all the fun. But it's been proven in several experiments that sans serif is a lot more faster to read. Whenever you're choosing a font style, try not to go for more than two or three types. When there are multiple font styles all at the same homepage, it creates a sense of confusion. And that's not how we want our brand to be perceived. Another important aspect are the pictures. Of course, we need a picture because that is what adds life to our websites. But this is a very crucial aspect because if your pictures are too large, it will take ages for your pages to load. And when that happens, it tests the patience of your visitor and only a few of them will stick around. So the right dimension, the right format of the picture is incredibly important to optimize your web page. The ideal format for logos is PNG and for pictures is JPEG. You can compress and crop all the unnecessary segments of the pictures. 
All of these little ways will help you to optimize for faster loading. Remember, in the beginning of this video, I told you something about responsive design. If you're wondering what that means, it is an incredibly important aspect you have to keep in mind, especially in this internet time that you're living in. There's a phone, there's a tablet, there's a laptop, and there's also a television screen. Your visitor can view your website in any of these devices. So it is important for us to customize our websites according to different screen dimensions. For example, if somebody is visiting your website on huge television screen, the text size will be a lot more larger than the text size you would use something on a phone screen. If you're using something like Framer, you can customize your website on different screen dimensions all at the same interface. If you want to take the user experience of your website to a little higher level than your competition, then a very easy way to do this is to use customized language on your web page. If you know your target audience is a focused community of people, you know their language, then it's a great idea to connect with them in their own language. Again, if you're using Framer, you can use their latest AI feature that helps you to translate each and every word on the web page at just a single click of a button. And of course, how can we forget colors? Colors are an incredibly important aspect of your websites because colors are not just the face of your website, but they also impact you psychologically, subconsciously. If you're new to color psychology and you want to know about the basics, you can check out my series on colors and that will help you to get started. Whatever color combination you choose for your website, try and go for high contrast options such that your text on your background is very easy to read. Try not to use more than two or three colors on your web page. Again, too many colors can create confusion. And that's not how we want our brand to be perceived. Last and definitely not the least aspect, when you're just about to publish your website, it's always a great idea to take feedback from multiple people to test your website. Often when we create a website, because the process is so tedious and time taking sometimes, we get emotionally attached to our own projects. And this is not a good thing to happen. It is very important for us to take multiple feedbacks from multiple types of people and personalities because your website is for the public, right? It's not a private domain thing. So whenever somebody gives you a feedback, it's a great idea to note it down. A good website is a result of multiple iterations and multiple improvements. I hope all of this was helpful to you in some way. A big thank you to Framer for sponsoring today's tutorial. I'll add the link to Framer in my description box and I'll also add a coupon code that you can use and get some additional free discount if you plan to subscribe for their paid options. Thank you so much guys for watching my videos. It means so much to me. If you have any questions for me or anything you want to say, you can write your heart out in the comments and I will try my best to get back as soon as possible. Have a wonderful day ahead and I'll see you all very soon.